All right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? It's a uh, it's a new day. It's a new chapter. <laughs> but, whew, same old truth. All right. Uh, it's Thursday. Um, guys, I'm excited and <laughs> I'm ready to talk about things. Um, that this chapter has made clear to me tonight. So let me invite some people. Sorry I don't have any, you know, uh, five blind boys of Alabama or any other mighty clouds of joy or you know, Milton Bronson, whatever Marcus be playing. Uh, <laughs> all the people he be playing. DJ Cadden, whoever. Sorry, I don't have any of that. Um, but I do have uh, something to say. So let's invite a few people and then I'll get started, y'all. Uh, shout out to the squad, man. You know, doing it back to back and just, you know, keeping up and... Um, just wanting to always <laughs> stay in the gym, if I could say it like that, right? Um, I don't want to be just a casual exerciser. I want to be. I want to work it out, as as the scripture says. I want to work out this salvation on a daily basis, right? And so we're going to implement something on Friday as well, because um, we don't want to take no days off, right? No cheating. Um, but <laughs> we want to be able to uh, give God the opportunity to speak on uh, multiple levels, multiple opportunities. Um, yeah. So all that being said, I'm going to go ahead. I think I got two more people to invite and I'm ready. Yeah, I think that's it. All right. So uh, Marcus, Angela, Aaron, thank y'all. Hey, he is. What's up, bro? All right, y'all. So, uh, man, we, we've had a fantastic time in First Kings, um, and it, we're just carrying it over, right, to the next book, and we're going to make it happen, right? Um, so I talked about two things, and <laughs> I thought it's interesting. Uh, we've been dealing with purpose quite a bit, and when we're dealing with purpose, and I, I haven't seen the significance of purpose as much as I've seen it here in these last few weeks. And I understand now um, why we have to be as diligent as we need to be, man, um, physically and spiritually. You know, physically, uh, it's necessary because God intended for us uh, to live a healthy life spiritually as well. And I mean, if you see in Scripture everything goes hand in hand, right? You know, Jill does a segment and she does a great job called, and she talks about seeing the spiritual side of things. And what she does is she points out things naturally and then she gives clarity through it spiritually. And I just think for, for all intents and purposes, that's what everything does. It's designed to, to put us back in alignment with what God designed for us to do and have how he designed for us to be. Um, so, you know, I'm literally trying to do better in my discipline uh, physically as I am spiritually. And I believe that God will be pleased in that and he will honor us, right? So, you know, that, I mean, in its simplest form, y'all, we're just trying to take scripture and apply it to everyday life. You know, it is not antiquated at all. <laughs> so, all right, so I'm ready to deal with some behaviors, right? Uh, this is the thing. When you when you learn how to believe, you know, we, we, we are to believe that Christ died, right, in order to receive salvation. And basically what believing means is you are accepting uh, you are accepting something more than you are doubting it, right? You say, well, the evidence shows or information that I receive, that gives me more 
I, I lean towards accepting it more than I do doubting it. That's what belief does for us, right? And, and, and the thing about it is, if you're not careful, uh, if you don't transition that over to the knowing part of who God is, which God requires of us to know him, right? Not just believe in him, but to know him, right? That's, that's the beauty of, 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 of what, what, what this means. When you get to know him, you, you now transition from just accepting, uh, having acceptance of something more than you do doubt it. But now that you know, there's not a lot of wavering you do now. And then God begins to reveal uh, his position, reveal his heart, reveal uh, his plan, uh, not only for the lives of those that we're reading about, but for your own life through through one chapter at a time, right? <laughs> and so, yeah, he's been doing a great job doing that. And so I just want to reveal some things tonight uh, in the in the life of Elijah, and I'm going to get out of here, y'all. All right? So I, I want to set the stage. I know how I roll, right? So number one, um, Elijah, from 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 the moment we, we saw Elijah um, uh, in the book of 1 Kings, he literally came to deal with King uh, Ahab. Right, that's basically what he did, and uh, we know the story. We said it well, and, and, and the thing about it is, is that he pronounced a prophecy over Ahab concerning his family. Right, and there's a few things because I we shared about it. We we talked about his situation uh, uh, in, in in chapter 19, how how things went about, but in now in Second Kings chapter one. Now Ahab is no longer living, and now he's dealing with his son. And the thing about it is, is Elijah is fulfilling his purpose. And I want us to keep in mind, because this is going to be interesting, right? And it's just my perspective. Elijah, literally, after he uh, 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 allowed those 450 false prophets to die, right, he, he ran off, he, he, he became scared, and, and he had all this anxiety and these, these, these emotions that he couldn't control, right? And, and at that moment, uh, 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 we, we saw him somewhere he shouldn't have been, right? <laughs> Even God asked him, what are you doing here, Elijah, right? And so now, uh, he, at, at, when he was there, he made the statement, I, I wish that you would kill me. I want to die, right? And, <laughs> and, 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 and for all intents and purposes, Elijah uh, won't be with us too much longer, right? But what will happen is Elijah will fulfill his purpose. And I want to show that tonight uh, where, uh, where he started, <laughs> God made sure he finished before he got up out of here. Oh, man. Oh, I hope that's going to say something to somebody tonight, right? Because God didn't take him out uh, at the cave when he asked for it. But when, when his purpose was done, right, then God said, all right, let's go. And I'm just saying to you tonight that, I, you know, and, and <laughs> I'm saying to you tonight, every day you get up, every moment that you, you have another opportunity to serve uh, the creator of all things, then that's another opportunity for God to say that, well, I'm not done with you yet. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I want y'all to see that tonight, uh, just in its simplest form. Right? Elijah asked for it a long time ago, but God made sure that Elijah had an opportunity to complete his purpose before he got out of him. Right. Y'all remember what Paul said I fought. All right. Anyway, I don't get into all that. So I want to stay on task tonight. Verse one, after Ahab's death, Moab rebelled against Israel. Now, uh, Uzziah had fallen through the um, latest of his upper room in Samaria and injured himself. Now, I want to stop there for two seconds. I want you guys to remember what we talked about. And, and again, I'm, I, I am going to hold fast to this until somebody pries it out of my little decrepit hands, right? If not for an example, what we see in Scripture either is going to fill, fulfill examples, give us the example of something, or it's going to fulfill Scripture in some form or fashion, right? Right? Example meaning that we're going to see something that'll help us to understand something else. Or if not, God's word has been spoken and then it's going to come to pass eventually, right? Those are at least two things that you will continuously see in scripture, promise you, right? 
Yeah. So at this moment, you see here that two things have taken place the moment Ahab died. I want to recognize the fact that God told uh, 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 Ahab because of his hu uh, quick humility and his uh, trying to humble himself after he did what he had to do. What's up, Miss Jill? Thank you for joining me. Right after he did what he had, what he done, and he became humble. God said, "Well, guess what? I won't deal with you, but I'll deal with your sons." Y'all remember that, right? And so here we go. Right, all of a sudden, the moment Ahab dies, the moment things begin to turn around. But they're only turning around because God has made it clear that hey. I'm going to deal with your family. So what does he do? The moment he dies, Moab begins to rebel, right? And then his son becomes injured. I mean, y'all, when I tell y'all, if you don't learn how to fear the God of creation by now, uh, I, either you on some medication or you, uh, I don't even want to say the other part, but I, listen, you need some help because he's not playing, <laughs> So, and, and so at this moment, you know, the, the word of God is becoming fulfilled, right? And so now, uh, uh, then he says, so he sent messengers saying to them, go and consult Baal Zebub, the God of Ekron, to see if I will recover from this injury. Man, so, okay, I'm just going to read it. Uh, it says, but the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, the Tishbite, go up and meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and ask them, is it because there is no God in Israel that you are going off to co consult Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? Woo! Y'all see that? Crazy, right? He's already dealing with him. What's going on, Elhorn? Thank you for joining me. Right, he's already <laughs> dealing with his son immediately. <laughs> he ain't wasting not an ounce of time. So, so I want to show this because I want us to see something. I made a statement, right? I, I made two statements, right? That number one, uh, as long as you don't forget that you have a purpose, then you won't. Then the mistake that you made, uh, uh, <laughs> you won't have to deal with it uh, uh, as though you didn't have a purpose. Right. It affects you. And I'll, I'll say that. I mean, I said exactly what I said, but y'all know what I said. Right. And then I made another statement that pleasure says YOLO. And for those who don't know what YOLO means, it's you only live once. Right. But purpose says yo-yo. And I'm going to deal with that when I get through because uh, I may have to shout on that. <laughs> yeah. So at this moment, I want us to recall the fact. Remember when. Again, when Elijah killed him, yes, ma'am, what's going on? Appreciate you. I'm glad you joined me because I know you're going you're gonna to get with me. So watch this, y'all. So Elijah was running from Jezebel, Ahab's wife, right? Good, morning. Good evening, Miss Skinner. Thank you for joining me. Right? And so I want to show you guys something. All of a sudden, there has been a shift where he no longer is fearful of the people that he was afraid of in chapter 19. What happened? I'll tell you what happened. He had a conversation with God and God had to call him out, right? And then now where he was running from somebody, but it was because of a mistake that he made, right? And God wanted to get his attention. But I love the fact that Elijah did not forego his purpose. Now, I'm going to get off the train here because I want to share. I want to talk about something for just two seconds. Right. Right. Uh, what we fail to do sometimes because we all make mistakes. Right. We all find ourselves in a situation sometimes that we don't want to be in, but we really intentionally put ourselves in. Right. Yes. But there are a few of us that when we get in that situation, we begin to have this amnesia as though God didn't call us for a purpose. And all of a sudden, you have these preachers who once were ministering to people who were serving people that all of a sudden now they don't believe the word that they used to preach or they don't but they, they, they no longer uh, 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 want to go. Man, I, I, I promise y'all, I, I, I met a guy and I didn't know nothing about him. And man, he was just he was just so out there. Uh, I, I was like, I mean, I just thought he was just a regular dude. 
Until somebody said, yeah, uh, 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 he used to be a minister at his old church. I said, what? He used to be a minister? What happened? And he was just like, man, uh, his wife did something to him uh, and whatever. He got a divorce and this, that, and the third. And it's like, what? Are you kidding me? Man, and, and we find ourselves because of what situations have taken place in our lives, we begin to forget that God has called us to a purpose. But then that begins to speak to who, who we are in our heart. Right. What really is in our heart that God and he's the only one that has the tool to do it, which he begins to unease us and begin to sift us and have all that, that, that impurity and all of those uh, uh, shortcomings. They rise to the top as he begins to agitate it. Right. And it begins to it begins to show who you really are. Right. <laughs> Woo. So, so at this moment, I love the fact that in spite of what Elijah did, man, he made sure that he didn't forget his purpose, right? Because you have people who are in Christian, who are in Christianity, who, who want to still please their flesh, right? Who, who still want to, to, to find their pursuit of happiness. No, sir. No, ma'am. That, 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 that ship has sailed, Right? If that's who you want to be, then you don't want to be a follower of Christ. Real talk, y'all. This is not what this is about. He didn't bring you down here to see if you can hit the lottery and be on vacation for the rest of your life. No. Right? <laughs> All right. So that's the, that's the beauty of what I'm seeing in Elijah today. That where he once was in a place where he was running away from the enemy. Now he's saying, no, 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 no. I'm going, God has called me to this. Then I'm going to, I'm going to deal with it because why? I have a purpose in life. Yeah. So I'm telling you today that if God has called you and you're going to wake up in the morning, there is a purpose for you somewhere to do something. And I'll thumb up that one right there. All right. So now this is not his first time. This is his second time coming back to Ahab, Right. For, for, you know, it's so crazy. In my perspective, it's like this is the only king that Elijah dealt with, right? And until until everything was fulfilled in the life of Ahab and his son, Elijah stayed here. But the moment everything went down and, and his son died and the dynasty was over, Elijah, he got up out of here. And I, I don't get on that. But because of what he said, right? All right, he wanted to die. And we heard Matthew chapter 12, right? That your words, you will be held accountable. You will be judged for everything that come out your mouth. All right. All right. <laughs> right? So, so God wasted no time in putting in action uh, for unleveling Ahab's family. Right? So here we are. So now he says in verse 5, when the messenger returned to the king, he asked him, why have you come back? A man came to meet us, replied, they replied, and he said to us, go back to the king who sent you and tell him, this is what the Lord says. Is it because there is no God in Israel that you are sending me to consult Baal Zebub, the God of Ekron? Therefore, you will not leave the bed you are lying on. You will certainly die. Man, listen. <laughs> so this is what I want to say about this prophet, right? Like he he's never hunting for the right words to say, right? I, I've seen jokers. Uh, 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 I'm seeing from the spirit, and they begin to like try to fish for stuff. What you fishing for? Um, we, if you're talking to the Creator, you can tell me what I said in my bedroom. What's up, Uma? Right? Yeah, thank you for joining me, ma'am. So, uh, you know, I, I don't get that. Man, this dude here wasn't even involved in the conversation. But God told him, you need to stop those guys and tell them that he ain't going to leave his bed. Right? <laughs> so, while these jokers sitting up doing these Ouija boards and these oracles and all this palm reading and everything else. What's up, Dominic? Right? Man, listen. <laughs> no. Y'all acting like there is no God of the creation. Y'all acting like there is not a Christ that sits on the throne uh, to the right hand of the father. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so verse seven says, the king asked him, what kind of man was it who came to meet and told you this? 
says they replied, he was a man with a garment of hair and with a leather belt around his waist. The king said, that was Elijah, the Tishbite. Verse nine, then he sent, then he sent to Elijah a captain with his company of 50 men. The captain went up to Elijah, who was sitting on the top of a hill and said to him, man of God, the king says, come down. Bruh, yeah. Yeah, all that stuff, man. It's, it's nonsense. Horoscope, whatever. Y'all got to get off the gas with that stuff, man. Right? Okay. So anyway, so now they send the people. Again, y'all remember what he was doing at first, right? When he was not doing what he was supposed to be doing, he began to flee from the enemy. But now that the enemy is coming to him, right? He's no longer fleeing now, right? He got, he got the word. <laughs> Listen, as long as you're doing it by my authority, then there'll be no problem, right? So it doesn't matter who don't agree with me. It don't matter who have a problem with me. As long as I'm coming, not by my name, but by the name that's above all other names. Okay. All right. I just want to make that clear tonight, right? Not, don't come in your own authority, right? Make sure that you're coming by what God has called you to do. Yeah. So at that moment, it, it, it don't matter, right? We got to do what he's called us to do, right? <laughs> so, at, so you see here that these 50 men come and he's calling him down, right? And he said, hey, king, won't you go with us? Elijah answered, the captain, if I am a man of God, may fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50 men. Then fire fell from heaven and consumed the captain and his men. Uh-oh, watch this, y'all. I want to show a small contrast here, right? <laughs> because he killed 450 men in 19 and he got in his feelings. So you would think that he would start killing jokers. Well, no. No. But the problem was is that what he was doing was not glorifying God. Why? Because he did not get permission from God to do this. And at that moment, what he's saying, because he said, if I'm a man of God, which he is, he said, may God then send fire. Not me pronouncing folk to kill somebody, but if God's will for it, then send the fire down and boom, right? What'd you say? That's where the clowns today get, yeah, if I be a man of, yeah, say, bro. But that's what I'm saying. Y'all call down some fire. <laughs> call, call down something and see if he's going to support you. Okay. I'm just saying. So at that moment, then it's, it doesn't belong on his hands. Right? It belongs in God's hands. Right? Y'all remember Moses, right? Mo <laughs> right? Moses made sure that he never took the credit for delivering the people out of Egypt. Right? And so here now, Elijah, he, make, he, he makes up for his misunderstanding in 19 and said, well, now nah, I'm not going to just say it on my own account. But if God, if God wants to do it, then guess what? He'll send the fire. Boom. Fire him up. Right? Right. So watch this. What's up, Keisha? So check this out. Not only did he do it the first time, but watch this. <laughs> it says, verse 11, at this time, at, at this, the king sent to Elijah another captain with his 50 men. The captain said to him, man of God, this is what the king says. Come down at once. Again. Now, I want to show y'all something because it's really jack boy. It's really messing me up, right? <laughs> so watch this, ladies and gentlemen. I want y'all to see something. Uh, at this moment, we've seen in the past where God has taken a situation and, I, and dealt with uh, two parties at the same time, right? I love this moment because this is my perspective. What I see here is there's three different times that a situation is going to come about, right? And it's going to play itself out. Three different moments, three different situations. But guess what happens, right? So not only are the people coming from, uh, 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 what's that boy's name? Ahazi, uh, I think that's his name. I think, uh, Ahazi, uh, right? Not only are they coming from him, but guess what? Elijah has three opportunities to make sure that he doesn't make the same mistake twice. <laughs> well, what are you saying? I don't want, listen. As long as you're obeying the Father, 
then all things will work together. Right? It's, it, it's right? What did it say? All things are going to work together. Why? If you're called to your purpose. <laughs> Woo! Oh my God. That, that, that is so crazy right now. Right? That we know that all things work together for them that are called according to their purpose. Right? And that love God. So we see that Elijah is still walking in his purpose. And as he as he is led by God, man, this is so crazy. So three times these people are coming. And so you have three opportunities to get in your feelings and be like, wait, 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 wait. I can do this now. Oh, he, he killed him the first. Oh, well, I'll, I'll tell you what. I got something else for y'all. No, you just stick to the script, bro. Right? Actors on the stage. Remember, just stick to the script. He said the very same thing to the first one as he's going to say to the second one. Right? <laughs> so I love that because watch this, watch this. The only reason Moses failed us was because he did not do exactly what God told him to do with the rock. So Elijah, don't make the same mistake, right? Because guess what? He killed 50 people and he didn't kill his feelings. Right? That, that's, man, great articulation. Exactly. Call to your purpose is obedience in action. My, I mean, I can't say it no better than that. Thank you. Very well said. So at this moment, you got to see this, y'all. Y'all got to see this. This he, did, he killed 50 people, but he's not in his feelings. Why? Because he's doing what God has told him to do. He's making sure that God is getting the glory, right? Yes. That's it, y'all. How do you stay out of your emotions, right? Remember, when the prophet told that other dude, uh, slap me, he wouldn't slap him. Why not? Because you didn't believe he was a prophet. Oh, okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Well, when you leave, you're going to get killed. Hey, guess what happened? <laughs> so I'm just saying you have to see the clarity in this moment, ladies and gentlemen, that if you feel as though you're operating in the obedience of God, but you have this uh, uh, emotion, this overwhelming feeling that is not of God, that is fearful, right? The fear of God is not that the fear, fear is not of God. Right. If those things are coming, then you have to check your motives. You have to check your reasoning for doing something. Right. It starts with us. So so he killed. Not only did he kill 50, then he killed another 50. And he still didn't have an emotion. Wow. That tells us something. Right. That in 19, his motives are wrong. But in Second Kings chapter one, his motives are right. And it doesn't matter what it was as long as he was doing it under the authority that God had given him. Got to love that. Right? So the consistent thing is you, if, as the enemy comes, you remain consistent. All right. Okay. All right. Consistency is the key. Right? I'm just saying. Don't waver. Don't, don't, you don't have mercy. You let God have mercy. Right? That's, well, that's half the people's problem. Right? Deny yourself and keep on. Yeah. Know what you're. Yes, right. You got to know. Right? So that's what I'm saying. Don't you get in your feelings because it's your family members. Don't get in your feelings because it's somebody you respected for a long time. Right? Don't get in your feelings because it's, it's somebody that looks like they're a very nice person. It does not matter. The only way that things are going to work out all together for your good. Right? Because he, he took an L in 19. Right? But that mistake, he learned from it and it brought him to this place, right? And all of that worked together for the outcome of the good of him who was called to his, say that, purpose. All right. <laughs> right. So you got to make sure that you understand that that's the only way it's going to work out. And if you're somewhere that you know you shouldn't be and you hear the voice of God saying, what are you doing here? Then it's up to you to make that adjustment and move to the place that he has you to go next. Just ask Jonah. All right. <laughs> All right. I'm almost to. I got something else to say, though. Right. Yeah. Whew. All right. So the second guy came and then he said 13. So the king sent. And, and, and the fire came down on them too, right? So watch this. Verse 13. So the king sent the third captain 
with his 50 men. This third captain went up and fell on his knees before Elijah. Let's stop there. Here we go. Example, right? They heard, hey, Johnny and them didn't come back? No. Sam and them didn't come back? No. Uh, Cecil, it's your time. You go. But they didn't come back. I know. But we're going to get them this time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cecil better have some sense about himself, right? Yeah. So now the third captain goes. And as soon as he gets there, watch this. The third captain went up and fell on his knees before Elijah. Man of God, he begged, please have respect for my life. Mm. And the lives of these 50 men, your servants, see fire, see fire has fallen from heaven and consumed the first two captains and all their men, but now have respect for my life. I, I know, I'm sorry, I couldn't think, I, that's just the name, <laughs> y'all just pray for them. The angel of the Lord said to Elijah, go down with him. Whew. So now you see, right? That if we learn to stand, and after we've done all that we know how to do, stand there for still, <laughs> right? And see the salvation. Okay, so y'all know that Elijah was running at one point in time, but now he's learned to stand still and watch God work. Okay, all right. I'm just trying to tell y'all something. That's why you got we. That's why we got to move from this believing. To this knowing, because if you're believing, that means that you may have, uh, uh, you may accept what you see, or, or you may accept what the information is given to you, and it may be six to seven. But at at one point, something can can take a turn, and then you can doubt more than you than you accept, and the believing goes out the window, right? Because he said, "Help my unbelief." But when you go to the place where you know. <laughs> when you know that you know that you know that you know, then it don't matter. Yeah, that's that, yeah, Jill, that's exactly right. Right? When you know that what God says will come to pass, and that if we're obedient, then He will be there, right? Regardless. And if you're in purpose, all things will work out. That's not there ain't no believing in that. You won't, you won't, you won't waver. You won't, you won't, you won't sit up here and, 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 and second guess yourself. Like I know what I'm called to do now. I have no doubt, right? I've been on there when ain't nobody been talking to me. I've been on there when ain't nobody been paying attention to me. I know now. I've seen him. All right. Okay. So all I'm saying is this. At this moment, Elijah didn't run. And until the enemy understood that I ain't going nowhere. Woo, that's a preach right there. All right, I ain't going to move on that. But when the, when, when the enemy realized that he ain't going nowhere, I'll tell you what. Can you just not kill us? And now God is going to use them. Right? So don't jump the gun. Don't, don't, don't sit up here and play that game where you playing chicken with the enemy. No. Man, listen. Wait till y'all see Genesis. Right? I talked about that. That full armor. It ain't about fighting them. It's you standing there and allow and you draw. Okay. Anyway, I don't get that. Y'all see it. Don't worry about it. Right? So the angel of the Lord, verse 15, said to Elijah, go with him. Do not be afraid of him. So Elijah got up and went down with him to the king. He told the king, this is what the Lord says. It is because there is no God in Israel for you to consult that you have no God in Israel for you to consult that you have sent messengers to consult Baal Zebub, the God of Ekron. Because you have done this, you will never leave the bed you are lying on. Now, y'all got to remember, this boy had to see what his daddy went through, right? I, I mean, come on now. But for whatever reason, <laughs> well, we know why, because it was fulfilling scripture, right? And it's not that God gave him did not give him an opportunity god already knew what type of person that boy was going to be it just it is what it is but see this is what i'm so this is what's so crazy when you no longer invest in your family tradition but you accept the adoption of the 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 uh uh the christ that lives 
then you don't have to worry about the Moabs. You don't worry about falling and not being able to recover, right? You don't have to worry like Hezekiah did when he jacked up his life after, okay. You don't have to worry, right? That's why it's so important to understand that being in Christ, <laughs> it, it, it changes you. Being a new creature puts you in a different part of the world, right? Okay. So watch this, y'all. What's the moral of my story? Because I'm almost through. I want to say, I want to, I want to share a point of view here. There's a perspective that we should take here, right? In 19, you had Elijah, who was the same man of God, right? Worked, raised, uh, raised a boy from the dead, right? We saw, we saw miraculous things in his life, and we seen him do something. Uh, that for most of us would have took us out, right? That we have failed God. We, 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 we fell into this emotion and, and for some of us, we wouldn't even recover. But I want to show a perspective tonight, right? Failure is only in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> right? So, so what I, what I'm getting to is, uh, uh, Elijah, after he did what he did in 19, he didn't go on this, this, uh, uh, this uh, world tour of, well, I need to feel better. I need to figure out, I need to find. Uh, no, he, he, there was no life of pleasure for him, right? He didn't just go on this, this retreat of, I need to figure out, I, I, maybe that's not what I'm supposed to be doing. No, he did not, right? And then he was tested again by the enemy, right? So this is what I'm saying tonight. I want to show y'all something. Woo! Have you ever played with a yo-yo? Right? And you know when a yo-yo, you have it in your hand, and as you begin to sling it down to the ground, you can retract it back into your hand. Right? And then you can sling it down again. Right? That's in its basic form. Right? You just learn how to swing it down and it come right back up. You swing it down and you come right back up. Right? But when you put a yo-yo in the hand of a professional, I don't know if y'all ever seen a yo-yo in the hand of a professional. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. Trying to fix it itself, right? Right. When you put the yo-yo in the hand of a professional, they begin to do things like walk the dog, right? Where they allow the yo-yo to just sit there and it'll just, it'll, it'll be on the ground. It'll be rolled to the ground, but the yo-yo is still spinning, right? And then he can begin to maneuver the strings around and make the yo-yo do other things and all while it's still spinning, right? And then he can recall the yo-yo back to his hand. I'm going somewhere with this, y'all, right? <laughs> so, so watch this. What happens in our lives when you don't YOLO, right? But you yo-yo, right? Watch this, y'all. When you find yourself not walking in pleasure, but in purpose, even though you may make mistakes, the problem is, is as that yo-yo begins to release down, it's yet still spinning. And God says, well, I'm not done with you yet, young man. I'm not done with you yet, ma'am. But I'll tell you what I am going to do. I'll begin to maneuver things around so you'll give another opportunity while yet still that thing is still spinning in purpose, right? Because Elijah is walking in purpose where we thought that Elijah may have failed God. God says, no, I'm not done with you because guess whose hand he's in? <laughs> Lord have mercy. He's in the hand of the master, right? The professional. And the yo-yo is yet, he's yet still spinning on this thing, right? And he said, well, wait a minute. I, you down there, yeah, but the, the, the thing is still spinning, right? I'm still working this out. Just don't forget that you have a purpose. Don't forget that you're a yo-yo and not a YOLO. <laughs> right? It's about perspective. So when you think you're failing, no, the yo-yo is still spinning. And he's making it, oh, y'all, I'm trying, Doc. I'm trying, y'all. Y'all watch this. But he's making that happen, right? So I'll tell you what happened. On, on, on a Friday night where that yo-yo is spinning, right? <laughs> you, yeah, that's it, Jill. We still spinning. Yeah, right? No matter where you are. So on that Friday, the enemy tried to come up against our, 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 our Messiah, right? And he said, wait a minute. <laughs> he's down. He's down for the count, right? They thought they won. 
<laughs> yeah, doc. Right? They thought they won. And then Sunday, they said, oh, yeah, he lost. Yeah. But then on, I mean, uh, on Saturday, they said, well, yeah, they lost. But then that Sunday, oh, when he got up. <laughs> when that yo-yo came back up, but the thing kept spinning, right? And they lost because God knew, Christ knew his purpose in life. It ain't about being a YOLO, but it's about being a yo-yo. And just know that when, when you get down, just understand that you got to know whose hand you in. Oh, Jesus. And just know that he'll take that string and he'll manipulate that yo-yo and get you where you need to go. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not out of control because he's move, maneuvering that thing. And that, that yo-yo can begin to blow your mind because it'll do things. And you'll be like, oh, how in the world? And oh, it'll twist it up in there. And then he just call it back to his hand. Failure is only in the eyes of the beholder. And as long as the one that is looking, right? As long as God sees his son, he sees the obedience. He sees the purpose in your life. He says, no, ain't no failure. I'm just still spinning the yo-yo. Right? Yeah. What'd you say? You'll never deviate too far. That's exactly right. Right? Jonah went so far and that yo-yo still was spinning on Jonah. And he was, they were walking the dog, right? It was steady down there. And then God got through with him and maneuvered him around and said, now go back to Nineveh, <laughs> as I call the yo-yo back up. Oh, yes, yes, right? Yes, yes, that's it, Keisha. So all I'm saying tonight is, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I don't have an issue with the mistakes. I don't even have an issue with the great, great, uh, uh, the great moments in your life. What I have an issue with is when we, don't, when we forget purpose. Right. When we get too high, when we think we can go in front of him, when, ooh, Lord have mercy. when we get too low where he think he won't come get us. I'm just telling you, if you just walk that street, right, and just keep that thing focused and understand you may take a dip in the road. You may hit a turn or a curve here. But when you always understand that the yo-yo is still spinning. Oh, please believe, ladies and gentlemen, he's not through because all things will work together. No, man, don't play with my yo-yo. That's right. No, Doc. <laughs> and listen, if you get it, listen, if you know, if you know some of them real good ones, they'll take three and four and five yo-yos and shh, oh, now, all right. I'm just telling y'all, y'all seeing God tonight as an example, right? And you seeing God showing us how scripture can be fulfilled. And I'm telling y'all tonight, God will take 10 yo-yos, 50 yo-yos, and all of them are spinning and God will maneuver them. But when he's done with you, he'll call them back into his hand, right? Because if you remember, always remember what John says, right? That I take them from him and then I give them back to him and no one can snatch us. All right. My Lord today. If y'all don't remember that, just remember that we are always in his hands, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I so again tonight, man. I I I, I am encouraged by the fact that uh, I I am not defined by my mistakes, and neither am I defined by my greatest moments in life. But I'm defined, as Paul says, <laughs> the race is not given to the swift, nor to the <laughs> to the strong, but it's given to the one that what endures. And so if you are at that moment where that string has been let down. And that yo-yo is still spinning down there. Just know. Don't believe. No. Don't believe. Because believe will put you, it'll put you from a yo-yo to a YOLO. Don't believe. You got to know. Know that in due season, in due time, all things will work together. You just don't deviate. Right? I want y'all to see one more thing. And I'm down here. Right? Nineveh did not get destroyed. Until Jonah came back. I mean, I, I mean, it never got destroyed. But the purpose that Jonah had to deal with Nineveh, it was put on hold until he got back to where he's supposed to be. A lot of people are on hold from us because we're not where we're supposed to be. And it's waiting on us to get back on track. Our kids, right? 
our spouses, our family, our church family, right? Somebody's waiting on us to come back from that fish and get back on land and walk to our purpose. Thank God for grace that the yo-yo is still spinning, right? So don't be a dyslexic Christian and thank you that you're a YOLO, but that you're a yo-yo. <laughs> oh, I love it today. What'd you say? He's the sovereign guy. Yeah, and he knows. Yeah. Man, I appreciate y'all tonight, man. That's second, that's second uh Kings chapter one. Uh yes, ma'am. Exactly. Stick to your assignment. Uh man, I, I we we appreciate everyone. Uh again, I stated earlier, uh I, I'm I'm treating this uh as spiritual fitness for us. And I'm treating this uh, as we would if we were fit, becoming physically fit. And I believe that real, uh, real, uh, real fitness, uh, uh, fitness heads, and uh, those those guys that are totally committed to uh, health, uh, they don't take days off, right? We put in their cheat days. So I don't want us to start cheating spiritually. Uh, so we're going to introduce something on tomorrow uh, again for for most of us. Uh, for most of you all that hadn't been with us from day one, uh, we want to go back and start uh, aligning things back up to give us an opportunity for us to see it all, right? Because this thing is not antiquated. And what we saw uh, five years ago, <laughs> we'll see something anew now, right? So I'm just telling y'all, we, we, so y'all just be prepared now. Just know that this, this, this ain't for the faint at heart, right? Right. We're running a marathon. Amen. All right, let's pray. Dear gracious and heavenly Father, God, we thank you so much, God, for uh, the example of Elijah. God, we know that he was uh, a true man of God and that, God, we saw him in his human state. Mm -mm -mm. God, so if we have nothing else in common with Elijah, we have this and that we know that he was a created man, just as we are created men and women. And God, in, even in spite of our most uh, greatest accomplishments, God, we can come to a place, God, that we're, uh, our, our burdens are getting too heavy. Uh, our anxiety is overtaking us. Uh, God, but thank you for letting us know tonight uh, that just as they thought that they counted out uh, our Savior, Jesus Christ, that the, the yo-yo steadily spins because we remain in purpose. And in purpose, God, as long as we are attached to you, <laughs> as long as the string is in the master's hands, all things will work out for our good. God, so thank you for, for transactioning, God, that believing in who you are and what you've called us to do, to knowing who you are and what you've called us to do. Hmm. We love you today. God, I thank you for this week. I thank you for your soldiers, God, that are, are, are continuing to, to, to fight and to exercise and to prepare for whatever's to come. God, because we are here to fight. We are, we are here to be the, 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 the onward Christian soldiers. Uh, thank you for <clears throat> my brothers and my sister, God, uh, that, that sacrifice uh, week in and week out tirelessly. God, wanting uh, to, to, to do what you've called us to do. Thank you for those that support us, God, because without support, God, it would be even a little more difficult. But God, thank you, God, that we are one body. And God, a body that functions together is a body that's well put together. <laughs> ah, God, these and other blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all. Uh, <clears throat> that's all my time tonight. And we got a fantastic week next week. So you guys be on the lookout. Uh, Flashback Friday is what we got coming to y'all, right? And so uh, you'll be hearing from us uh, tomorrow, and we're going to get this thing going. I appreciate it, uh, Miss Jill. Yeah, man, y'all go tell somebody, I'm a yo-yo. I ain't no YOLO, right? Yeah, because listen, remember, right, that if we do for his kingdom, what? All the things that we desire, but what's so far? All right. I, I'm finna get into a whole nother tension. <laughs> I'm just telling you, when your desire becomes his desire, you don't desire nothing but what he wants anyway. So that is. We love y'all. We'll see y'all on the other side of success. We out of here.